So here's the engine uh, coming back from the shop uh, on a trailer. Um, I had her strapped down pretty good. I uh, didn't want it uh, uh, tipping over out on the interstate and losing the engine. So um, strapped down, I made the uh, stand with uh, construction lumber and joist hangers. And then you can see the turnbuckles are bolted into the engine and tie it down. Um, just didn't want to take any chances and be secure. Uh, here's the engine back on the stand in the garage uh, just as she came in. Um, looked pretty nice. They painted it up nice for me. Um, everything uh, in really good shape. Next we'll go. I got my bore scope out and uh, went in through the spark plug holes and you can see the pistons. They're 30 over. They got a nice pattern um, on the cylinder walls. Um, kind of look, just kind of look through to see what kind of work they did. Looked pretty nice. And here you can even see one of the uh, valves. And you'll notice that the engine is um, inverted. It's upside down. Uh, because I've been working on the bottom. Usually we look at engines from the top side, but um, right now I need to do some work. I've been uh, test fitting the front cover, uh, checking out the, uh, the, the uh, oil pan seals, and installing the oil pump. Now installing the oil pump is a, is a little bit bigger challenge than one might think. Um, that uh, screen is pressed in and you can see right down right here where the marks are uh, that's where it presses in so you can go online and see from Melling uh, they they post uh, they make the pumps and the screens uh, they post a nice video that kind of explains it but um, I did waste a screen and have to go buy a second one because it, uh, even though I followed their method it didn't uh, work right away so as long as we're going through this let me let me bring out, come over here to my pile of parts. So this is what the bad screen looked like. Um, this black item here is a tool. Um, you can buy these. I bought this one at one of the race shops. Um, and it's you hammer on the end of it and you drive that uh, drive that pump into uh, or the, that screen tube into the pump. Um, I added this uh, clamp. Uh, melt, um, this tool costs about, I forget, it's less than $20. Not too bad. Uh, Melling sells a really fancy one for like $80 or $90 that, um, that is a clamshell and it clamps all the way around. Um, I had seen online that some folks had trouble getting the pump in so I added this clamp. That makes sure that the driver tool, which is open on one side, uh, can't slide off the tube or can't back off. So I keep I clamp that tight, hold it so that it goes in. Uh, what Melling will have you do is measure the depth of the pan where the screen is, uh, where the open part of the screen is, and then measure back up here to the engine, <coughs> and then measure the height from the pan, or from the uh, screen, um, down to the pan rail. And they want it to be 3 eighths to a half inch uh, from the bottom of the pan. Um, in my case now I've managed to make it a half inch, it's actually not quite flat from one side to the other. But um, the reason I ruined it the first time was I came in and I put my marks down, but I hadn't marked far enough back, see if I can get on there, I hadn't marked far enough back to be able to see it when I had it driven all the way in. And the um, suggestion is that you use some kind of a sealer. So I was having trouble seeing the mark, drove it in, got this thing too far out of position, and I was a, more than three quarters of an inch off the bottom of the pan, which w could lead to oil starvation. So I bought a new pickup, marked it more carefully, um, drove it in, got it started, drove it in about halfway, and then put the pump on the engine and verified that my marks were lined up and tweaked it just a little bit. You can see that I actually ended up with the lines not perfectly aligned, but pretty close. Um, they, the thing is, once you get it driven all the way in, you don't want to rotate it anymore. You don't want to disturb the press fit. It should go in one time, um, 
and then stay there. Some folks will tell you you should weld that pickup so that it can't move, but I know that you know GM, Chevy made tens of millions of these engines without ever welding those in. If you drive it in right, it should stay put for a street engine. If you're going racing, that may be something different. Um, also, I got high temperature uh, red thread locker. It's actually Permatex brand that's also rated to be used on press fits. And so uh, that adds an added measure of security. That, that was the sealer I used on this one. Was uh, coated it with red uh, thread locker, uh, drove it home. And one last thing that I did was uh, just to make the the uh, Melling folks will tell you there's a six thousandths interference, six thousandths of an inch press fit on this tube into that body, and it makes it hard to get it started. So I took and put put my tools, put this whole assembly together like this, and put this in the freezer. So that got it down to you know, 32 degrees or zero degrees, actually it's a pretty cold freezer. I took the pump and I set my oven at 200 degrees, which is kind of hot but not too hot, and let this warm up for about an hour in the oven so that when I came out here, um, I could go down onto this board, you can kind of see the marks in the board, um, and set the pump down on the end of the board, line this up on top of the pump and drive it in, uh, I said 200 degrees, so in order to handle 200 degrees, I have leather gloves. I had leather gloves inside of leather gloves, two layers, and that was enough for me not to burn myself. Uh, but having that hole expanded just a little bit and the tube a little bit smaller, um, things went together pretty easy. And as I say, that I didn't hit the 3 ace target, I hit a half inch, but that was pretty close. And it's within the tolerance that uh, Melling suggests. So now I'm laying out the, like I say, laying out the gaskets. Um, on the oil pump also, something that some people miss is that you can see down here there's a plastic collar. Uh, you have to install the drive shaft to the pump and you have to install, I have a second one here because there were actually two of them. Um, you install this little collar and that collar is larger than the hole that the shaft comes through. So when you install this, you have to make sure that you install that shaft and that plastic piece before you bolt the pump on and before you put the oil pan on because when you flip it back over, you won't be able to drop that shaft in from the top. There's not enough room and it could mean pulling the pan back off. Um, also, there was a suggestion online, I was having some trouble installing it, and there was a suggestion online, um, in, um, I went to, I, it was in instructions for installing an oil pump that said to take that plastic piece and set it uh, in hot water for a few minutes uh, to soften it up, and that would make it snap on easier, and it actually, it did very, very nicely. Um, I'm going to pull this timing cover off. I was... I was double checking the timing cover to make sure that it fit on the dowels properly. Um, I put in the put in the um, I I put in the front seal already. Um, part of my work while I was like, done was all of these parts. You, you can kind of see the pat that these were really rusted. The front the outsides were rusty, and I had to sandblast and finish and repaint. The um, thing I wanted to highlight on here, um, somebody had pried on this cover really badly. Um, and it had a, you can't see it anymore because I hammered it out with body tools. But there was a large dent in the corner of this, of this right in, see if I can get a little more light in there, right in this corner. Um, and it had rubbed through, you could see daylight, uh, because they had dented it in and it had rubbed on the timing chain. Uh, and it was open and leaking. So I used body tools to hammer and dolly and turned it back into a nice edge. But it was still going to leak. So I got um, uh, my son-in-law, who's a pretty good welder. There you can see the bead. He, uh, he got out his wire, his um, MIG welder and, and, um, and welded that up and ground it down and flattened it out and made a nice, turned it back into a nice cover. 
Um, these covers are are um, not not uh, standard. Uh, um, depending on the year, the timing pointer goes in a different place. And I couldn't go just buy one of these covers with the timing pointer attached. You could go to the race car shops and, and get a set of parts and kind of dummy something up. But in order to try to stay sort of original, I wanted to save the cover. Um, you can't just go down to GM and buy it anymore. Um, many of them have the pointer over here in the middle of the cover as opposed to on the edge. So you have to have a cover with the pointer in the right place and a harmonic balancer that has the mark on the balancer in the right place with respect to the keyway so that things will line up. Um, and right now it does. Um, I, the engine builders put this together and set it up so that number six is at top dead center, uh, which let them uh, line up. It's difficult to see, but there are there's a dot here and a dot here, and so they've lined those up for me so that I know that uh, top dead center is at number six. Uh, this lines up to the timing marks, and I've test I've put the balancer on just enough to make sure that the timing marks. Uh, indeed line up. Um, normally you don't see these engines from the bottom side. You can kind of take a look in here and, and see that we've got a, you know, all the brand new pistons installed. The uh, engine shop, um, you know, this engine been sitting for 25 years and it was all rusted up. Uh, number See, number five was the one that was rusted up the most, which is um, uh, this one here. Uh, the, the shop, um, this engine has been bored uh, 30 thousandths over with new pistons. The, um, they had to put a sleeve in number five uh, because it was too far, rust too far rusted and rotted out. Uh, they turned the crank 10, 10, 10 thousandths on the rods, 10 thousandths on the mains. So we're, thir we're 30 over, which should make it a, I think I said it's a 312 instead of a 305 now. Um, still cast pistons, they're stock. Um, they're uh, flat top with valve reliefs just like the originals. Uh, the engine shop did a really nice job. They got it all painted up for me, new valves, new valve springs. Uh, they gave me a double roll double row timing chain uh, for a little better um, durability. Um, you can't see it, but one. this is a completely stock build with one exception. I, um, I did some hunting for cams and um, comp cams had a grind that is rated as being very good for a tuned port engine, tuned port induction systems you have to be very careful with the cams. You can't get too wild or it uh, throws the tuning off. So they had a recommended cam that's uh, it's around 450 lift. So it's around, it was like 40 thousandths more of valve lift and about 10 degrees more of uh, duration at 50 thousandths. I think the seat to seat is actually pretty close, but it, they run faster ramp times. At this point, uh, that's where we are. I'm going to get back to um, putting the front cover and the oil pan on and continuing to move this forward. Um, time to start gooping up gaskets and and bolting things down. You can see I got the studs in at the corners of the oil pan. Uh, this particular design has uh, uh, studs on the corners and then reinforcing plates um, that that sit over the over the rails of the oil pan and then that all bolts down to help that cork gasket seal up properly. There are some new fancy gaskets that Felpro makes that are like one piece that are, are not cork and uh, for the sake of uh, going this way um, I haven't opted for those. My engine builder gave me a standard Felpro um, full gasket set and which most of which you'll see here in the pile and um, it's a specific set for a VNF uh, LB9, so everything is there, and I can work putting it together. Um, 
Got a fresh water pump down there on the floor. I can kind of see all my parts and tools uh, laid out. I've been cleaning and arranging and <clears throat> trying to get things ready to build here. So, next step, um, oil pan, front cover. I'll probably come back and show you how the harmonic balancer goes on since that was so much fun getting it off. Uh, I do have the special tool and we'll see how that works. 